Hello everybody, it's Josie here. I'm going to be doing a uh, kind of a, a, a book wrap up of four recent books that I've read um, and they're kind of two for two. So two of the books are by the same author and this author has just risen right to the top of my list of favourite authors. I've only read these two books of hers but now I want to get my hands on just everything that she's written. Um, and the other two books are kind of thriller horror books uh, and that is very much what I'm in the mood for at the moment uh, and yeah I just I, I love these and I, I thought I wanted to talk about them so okay um, the first kind of two for category is uh, I'll talk about my new favorite author so it's Kate Koja so um, this is the first book. Uh, this is called The Blue Mirror by Kate Koja. And this is actually uh, in the YA kind of section more because it, it follows a teen protagonist. And then the second one is this gorgeous book over here and it's called Skin by Kate Koja. Um, and this book is just crazy. First of all, how gorgeous is that gorgeous metallic kind of cover with sort of the, the drop of blood, which really kind of evokes the entire kind of story in this. Um, but let me first talk about why Kate has risen to the top of my favourite authors list. So um, it, it, some of you may know uh, my favourite authors include Poppy Z. Bright. Um, I love kind of that lyrical, um, crazy kind of uh, unreal writing, uh, Caitlin R. Kiernan, um, that sort of horror element in it, um, the, the almost like poetry of the writing, beautifully written horror that's slightly weird, that's, that, that kind of will take you out of your comfort zone. Um, and that's just sort of unique and interesting to that author. And Kate does that as well. So I, I think if you like uh, Pop Easy Bright and if you like Caitlin R. Kiernan, I think you would definitely try um, Kate Koja because I think you would like her work. Um, I also love anything that's kind of uh, set in that 90s um, around sort of the, the goth punk old scene of the 1990s. And particularly skin evokes that. Um, so that's another thing I like about Kate. So I'll start with skin. This is the, the um, this is definitely an adult book. Um, this is not a YA book. Um, I would say trigger warnings for um, self-harm, um, for, uh, you know, if you, if, if blood and gore and quite graphic descriptions of cutting and that, if that, you can't take that, then, then please don't read the book. But if you can, it's a, uh, the book is written, um, to me, it's a bit like Milton's Paradise Lost, where it's it's like a, almost like a long poem, but don't know that with you, because there is a story, and it's it's not poetry, but the way it's written, there's no chapters, you know, beginning to end, and it has this gorgeous, lush, dark writing style that I think is incredible. Um, the, the book itself is about two women, um, Tess and Bibi, and, uh, Tess is a, uh, a metal worker, so she does sculptures and she works in metal um, and she's kind of, she's struggling kind of artist in her, her metal sphere, making these gorgeous creations that nobody wants to buy, unfortunately. And then she also does like pickup work on the side. Um, and then she meets Bibi, who is a dancer and she has this kind of crazy dance troupe. Um, well, she's in a dance troupe, um, but she wants to kind of push the boundaries of what the human body can do about what dance does um, and they team up to kind of create this crazy metalwork slash dance show and that's really fascinating I really love that the creation of the show the, the the things that they make the things that they do and from then they really start to push the boundaries particularly BB um, like I said, she, uh, there, there is very much a sadness and a darkness in her. She expresses that through kind of physically, um, through her physicality. Um, and she, she kind of gets into scarification, um, piercing, and it, 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 it goes very far with Bibi. Um, there is also a relationship between the two of them. Uh, so it starts off as friendship. Um, there is a romantic relationship between the two of them. I would say they're both bisexual. Um, and it is uh, very intense. 
very codependent, quite dark. Um, the relationships in the book are like that as well. Um, there's an element of sort of gaslighting in this book as well, but one of the characters and, and what he does and the way he manipulates, I just, I, ugh, I just freaking love this book. It is, it is so many of the things that I love and it's just this kind of, I think when you look um, up Kate's writing on some forums, it's, it's kind of classed as weird fiction, but I love it. I think it is sensational and like I said this she has gone to the top of my list of favorite authors and this is one of my favorite books now um and I just think it's it's phenomenal it's so interesting it's so different um it's so well written and uh, I just it, it emoked, evoked all sorts of kind of emotions and I, I just think it's incredible and then I went straight to reading um this book over here and this is the blue mirror first of all that is just such a great cover just like a gorgeous kind of goth boy on the cover um but this one is actually YA but I would say it's definitely on the darker side of YA so you've got the main character um she is 16 and um Maggie Mags um is her name and she sits in this um cafe it's called the Blue Cafe um the Blue Mirror Cafe sorry and she draws so she she loves drawing um she's got a very kind of troubled home life her mother drinks a lot and uh Mags kind of escapes into this cafe where she sits and draws these characters she draws people walking past people in the cafe and she creates this kind of alternative world of the blue mirror and then one day she sees um three uh she calls them um squatters but but written slightly differently so um homeless kids that live on the street and they kind of they're hanging out outside of the the cafe and one of them comes in and she gets fascinated by cole who is who is Sort of the boy depicted on the cover and the cool thing actually about just a total aside here sorry about kate's covers is that this this drawing was done by her husband um and i think it's beautiful um anyway so she she sees cole she's she's kind of instantly fascinated by him um i would say it's kind of insta love although i would call it insta lust um in this book but it, it then it, it, as you can see it's a very short book so i'm just going to stop it there and say it takes kind of a dark turn um again it is it is <sighs> I guess it's a dark romance in a way, but not really. It's about, you know, finding your footing. It's about kind of understanding um, what people are good for you and what people aren't good for you. Um, about Mags coming into her own as a person. Um, it's it's stunningly written, as is skin. Um, it is... Uh, it deals with a lot of darker issues. So it's so children being homeless on the streets, abuse, um, alcoholism um you know depression all of those things are in here for such a short book i think it touches so many different um issues you know relationships that the, the tag on the back says some guys are more than bad news there's this like horror element to it um it's just fantastic um i love this book i mean needless to say they both like five star books i can't even like star, i don't think i'm gonna be too many doing too many star ratings kind of moving forward but for me you know if you want a star rating i i would say they are amazing and they're so beautifully written um and i cannot wait to get my hands on more uh, kate stuff there's a a short story collection i want to read i believe there's a reissuing of one of her first books cypher that i want to read and i might do an entire kind of kate koja um wrap up at one point once I've sort of read as much of her fiction as I can get my hands because it's actually quite difficult um and they're quite pricey these I managed to get second hand um to get your hands on her books but are oh, so worth it absolutely loved it and then the next book I want to talk about so this is also this is a new to me author as well this is Lauren Bukas and this is Broken Monsters um Lauren is a South African author which I love because that's where I grew up <laughs> that's my heart um and she actually wrote The Shining Girls which I have seen in charity shops and I've, I've never picked up and I'm definitely going to pick it up now if I can find it again um but this one sounded really interesting so it's a kind of I would say it's a fusion thriller horror book um so there's a lot of sort of horror elements towards the end um the first I would say three quarters of the book is very it's it, it's i i loved it i'm telling you it's it's a big book and i flew through this in a couple of days um but it's about a cop and she is um so so gabby is her name uh, she works on the detroit pd this is set in detroit um there's some great photos in the back of this book of lauren doing kind of research of the detroit area kind of of the artist scene so if anybody knows very much about detroit um it's famously the city that went bankrupt um in the u.s so um there's a lot of uh, people that have now moved in there's, there's a big artistic scene because it's it's a fairly cheap place to live um there's a lot of kind of abandoned buildings um and uh, and similarly there's there's quite a bit of crime but it, it's i think it's an interesting kind of gritty setting for this thriller and she's basically chasing a, th a serial killer who 
has committed a really gruesome murder where he's uh, I don't know if I should actually tell you, but anyway, it's, it's, okay, again, so, so with this, um, so obviously I can't say too much of the story because it's a thriller and a murder mystery, so she's pursuing this, this killer, I wonder if it says it on the blurb, oh yeah, it does, so he's, he's leaving these hybrid, um, bodies, so half human, half animal is the first body that they find, and it's kind of, it's, it's really obviously incredibly gruesome, and she's trying to work out who this is and, and what the hell is going on, you also get kind of the the killer's um, perspective in certain parts, which which I really liked. And then there's also a story about her daughter, um, Layla, and her friend, and and kind of what's happening to them at school. Um, again, trigger warnings. Obviously, if, there's the description of what these bodies look like, so there is gore and, and blood and and that kind of aspect to it. Um, there's also uh, one of the characters mentions um, suicide attempt uh, and depression. And there's also an issue around um, sexual assault and um, the way girls are treated in here, which is sort of part of the side story with her daughter. Uh, but I just thought this was fantastic. Um, again, it is a, it's a thriller. It's a, in a way, a procedural cop book, but not. It's wonderfully written. Um, I, I think it definitely has a lot better writing than a, than a lot of thrillers I've, I've read before. Um, it is interesting. It's weird. Um, the, the killings are, are odd, you know, the motivation of the, the kind of the murderer, the end bit, like I said, it kind of falls into the horror spectrum, I would say. Um, I just thought it was fantastic, uh, again, um, and I'm definitely going to read more uh, Lauren Bjorka's after having read this. And then the last book I, I read, and this is, I don't have it, I'll put a picture up, or I'll kill my flowers somewhere, um, is... Uh, oh, A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. So that one I was listening to on audiobook. Oh my goodness, I love that book. Um, so it is essentially a uh, kind of a possession story and it's about an exorcism. And the, the main plot of the story is that you have um, a girl whose sister was supposedly possessed by the devil. And what her family decided to do was bring in a TV show to sort of film an exorcism with a priest. Um, but what's really interesting about this is that you have the sister telling the backstory to a journalist who's going to write a book on, on what happened, you know, talking about what really happened, what it felt like to be a young girl caught in this, this crazy world um, of, of, you know, a reality show being made around the fact that your sister is supposedly possessed by the devil. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of questions. What I love about this book, and I think Paul Tremblay does it really well, is you, you obviously, it's very much a, a horror book, a possession story, um, but he sends up and references, you know, things like the exorcism, you know, the way uh, her sister is behaving, you know, is she faking? Is she not? You know, is she really possessed? Is she not? Is she, is it just a mental health issue? Is she just pretending for attention? Um, and, it, you know, it throws up the questions around religion, about what you believe, what you don't. I, I think it's fantastic. You can read it up as a straight up kind of possession horror story. Um, and But you can also read kind of a lot more into it, which I really loved about um, the writing. And I thought it was really, really good. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is definitely, I've, I've read a couple of Paul Tremblay's now and this is my favorite um and this is really a book that I I really really enjoyed so all in all um a very successful quartet of reading for the last um couple of weeks uh I really enjoyed those let me know if you've read any of them and what you thought or um if you have any recommendations based on those and if you've read any Kate Koja I haven't heard anybody kind of talk about her um but I you know if you've read any let me know um and if you you know of anything similar let me know um and yeah thank you all for watching and I will speak to you all again soon hope you're all very well and safe um yeah bye